Hey everyone, Kevin here. I haven't done an instructional design specific video in quite a while now, so I plan to make up for that today by talking about Kirkpatrick's four levels of evaluation. If you are an ID or want to become one, then you need to know these levels because they will be mentioned constantly in your job. You may have even heard them used in passing before because of how many industries actually use this system. In a nutshell, though, the levels are as follow. Number one, reaction. Level one, or L1 for short, is literally the quick and immediate feedback to a course or piece of learning. You would commonly recognize these as the surveys you take right after a lesson or some kind of service. My favorite example of an L1 is whenever I go to one of my favorite restaurants, Red Robin. After I pay for the meal, there is a quick survey asking how I would rate the service food, drinks, etc. on that little tablet on the table. More in the ID realm, though, you would see surveys that rate if the learners found the training valuable or helpful. Essentially, it is the immediate reaction that we are looking for at L1. We want to know if they left the session liking the training or not. Now, this is not the most important of Kirkpatrick's levels and yields the least amount of data about the training, but it is an essential starting point nonetheless. Number two, learning. L2 is the beginning of the more useful data about the training program and answers the question, did the participants gain the desired knowledge, skills, and attitudes needed to show they will learn something? Evaluation at this level tends to take on the form of the multiple choice and possibly a few short answer questions you see immediately following the course. Passing is usually dated by percentages, such as you answer 80% of questions correctly to receive credit. For example, say the training was about changing the oil in your car. The L2 evaluation could literally be something as straightforward as if the learner can change the car's oil while being watched by the instructor. If they accomplish the task, they pass. If they aren't able to, then they did not learn what they needed to move forward. Moving on to number three, behavior. L3 is where it gets a little more complicated because we begin to move into discovering if learners are actually behaving differently on the job as a result of the training and using what they learned during that training. As a result, this evidence takes a while to collect or observe but is absolutely necessary because companies want to know if the information helped or if it needs to be revised. IDs typically go back and edit things when this occurs or just for maintenance purposes later on to correct these problems. Let's elevate that earlier example now on changing the car's oil. Routines and methods need to be put in place to measure how often employees are correctly changing the oil on cars that come into the shop. This can be accomplished through daily reports and supervisor checkups, for instance. If low scores are repeatedly shown, then the training should be revised and supervisors can help learners rectify those mistakes. Finally, number four, results. L4 is the final and ultimate evaluation level in Kirkpatrick's framework. This is why it is the most valuable of all four levels. This stage measures how beneficial the program was for the company as a whole, the well-known and vital return on investment, or ROI. Metrics are also necessary at this level too, and if those who took the training are performing better than those who didn't, you can draw fairly meaningful conclusions from that data. Like the scientific idea of a control group and experimental group, for instance. To round out the changing oil example now, if you see better customer satisfaction in vehicles being completed faster and with fewer errors, then the company is benefiting from the training due to workers being more productive, completing the task quicker, and subsequently making more money because of it, the return on investment. In the end, what Kirkpatrick's model does for instructional designers is more than just seeing if we are making the company more efficient or closing a learning gap. We are also using the information to know what kind of courses our learners like or want and what is preventing them from performing their jobs as well as they could be. I can guarantee as you become an ID or continue to grow into the job, you will hear these terms and acronyms on a fairly consistent basis. It is the core of how IDs see if what they made is actually working or could be improved 
so you need to know them inside and out. Don't take it as a slight if your course performs poorly. You will grow from that experience and better learn what the company needs next time. In the end, trainings must help businesses and is why IDs can be extremely powerful, but on the sun, change advocates. And as always, I am here to help you learn and understand this system should you ever need it. See you next time.